personal relationship with their father? Who thinks that you can't call him your father? Imagine the Hebrews will say God is so powerful and God is, is so great that you can't even mention God. So they spell God G-D. Did you know that God took all of that out when Jesus Christ came? Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ is God up close and personal. That's why he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He modeled God and was God in the flesh. He was up and personal and in your face. And you can touch and handle him just as they did. That was God's way of saying, I just want to be so close. But we keep seeing God as this distant person and, and we're so incapable of being on this level. The Bible says that while Jesus was on the earth, that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. But he considered himself one that was a servant. He literally brought himself under God, even though he was God in the flesh. What was he saying to us? He was saying that God, how many of you know, how many of you have children? Now, are your children cows? Are your children dogs? What are your children? They are what you are, aren't they? If we are God's children, am I a dog? Am I a cow? Am I a cat? Am I a boogeyman? What am I if I am God's child? I am what he is. And the Bible says, be ye holy. Not just holy as separated and separated under God's face, but whole as he is. first thing that has to happen when you start when God starts to deal with you is that he's got to change the way you think because we think surface we never think interior we always judge the surface it's just our habit that's how we've lived all, all of our lives we are symptom oriented if I'm going to deal with a problem it's symptoms I can't deal with the core problem. Psychiatrist does the same thing. Medicine does the same thing. Mommy and daddy, they do the same thing. Why did you do that? And the child looks at you because you just gave them permission to lie. I don't know. <laughs> How often times do we hear the scripture where God says, man judge the outward appearance, I judge the heart. God sees where he is sending you, but he sees where your flesh doesn't want you to go. You see, there is a higher self and a lower self. How many of you believe that? Oh yeah, there is. There is a higher self a spiritual mind that the Bible talks about, the carnal mind, the lower self. Are you listening to me? The physical is the lower self. The physical was never meant to be the, the master. It was always meant to serve the spirit. The higher self. So when you, when you hear people say, you know, they, you know, they quote Shakespeare, uh, uh, you know, if, be true to thyself, to thine own self. Well, which self do you want to be true to? Because if you're true to your lower self, everything is relegated to where you live and where you are and what you're going through. And that's where people say, I just want to keep it real. This is just how I feel. Feelings are temporal. They are nothing but a fast-moving, active movie. You can change the script whenever you want to. You can rewrite your script and your entire future if you desire to. 
How many of you believe that? Come on, raise your hand if you believe that. You can sit right here and kill yourself and destroy your whole future. Who, who's, who had the power of the future? You have the power of your future. People are like, God holds the power of my future in his hands. Yeah, but you control it. Mm. Oftentimes you'll see people, they'll make mistakes and they'll say, God just got me here at this moment. God didn't get you there. You got yourself there. You made the choices. You got to remember who you are. You are God-like. Gods have choices. Slaves do not have choices. You have a choice in the matter. And experiences are not supposed to shape you and to literally shape your choices. Can I give you an example? The scriptures, real fast. Jesus is sitting down with Peter. A tax collector, temple tax collector, comes up to him. And he says to Peter, he's not talking to Jesus. He says to Peter, Peter, does your master pay taxes? Peter said, yeah, my master pays taxes. You do pay taxes, right? <laughs> and Jesus looks at Peter and he says, Peter, let me tell you something. The king, when the king assess a tax, does he tax the strangers or his children? And Peter said, the strangers, of course, the citizens. Not, the, not his own children. He says, you say it right. So the, he says, so the children are actually free. I want you to get a revelation of this one. Jesus never agreed with taxes. He agreed with paying them. He was saying the children are free. They shouldn't pay taxes to the temple. And certainly not Jesus Christ, who that, temp, that tax was a tax for their sins. Jesus never sinned. But he said, because, and here's a good thing for us to get. He said, because I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to stir up nothing right now because I've not, I've not reached my full pur purpose and destiny, fulfilled anything. So I, I, uh, he said, so listen, I want you to go fishing. Go down to the Capernaum Lake. Go there and, the, and get a hook. And the first fish you catch in its mouth would have a coin. Take that and pay our tax. It was the exact tax, no more and no less. Listen to me. Jesus sat down when the man was asking for the tax immediately. Did Jesus have the money on him? No. Did he have the money? Yes. What was he driven by? Kingdom thoughts or? That's why he didn't fret and he was not, full, he was not concerned with what they thought. There was an immediate need right there. And right there, instead of worrying and saying, oh my, oh my God, I don't have them tax money. He said, Peter, go and fish. Now here's the wonder of God's creation in us. The moment he spoke it, whenever you speak, you start a sequence of events. How many of you know that? You, 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 the moment you speak something, you start a sequence of events, whether you want to agree with it or not. You do it all the time. You get up in the morning, you, you go to bed late last night and you say, oh, I got to get up in the morning. I got to get up to go to work. You, you spoke something and you started a sequence of events. Even when you said, I don't know if I'm going to go to work tomorrow. Any of you ever said that the night before? And you started a sequence of events that created an atmosphere conducive to finding reasons to not go to work. Look at somebody and say, you're more like God than you think. So Jesus Christ knew that he spoke a sequence of events. The moment he said it, Peter would follow. He had to follow through. 
He did exactly what Jesus said. He caught a fish. The first fish he caught, he didn't have to cut it open. That fish had an assignment based on what Jesus had said. If he had swallowed that coin, he would have had to cut that fish open to get that coin out. But instead, the fish, out of the command of what the man of God spoke, Elijah did the same thing. By this time next year, you're going to have a baby. Anyway, the moment he said it, that fish had to go and find the coin. It knew where the coin was because it had been swimming around all that time. And he knew that some fool had dropped it in there accidentally. <laughs> he got the coin in his mouth, took it where Peter was, saw Peter in the water, got caught. Peter opened his mouth. There was the coin. You see, Jesus said, everything I do, I do because my Father tells me to do it. Everything I do, I can do because my Father said I can do it. So where do I get it from? So thy kingdom come while I'm on this earth. And I'm, but I'm living heaven's thoughts. Thank you, Lord. I'll give the Lord a praise offering for that. I, th I thought that was just a good point. <laughs> so I want you to pay very close attention because when you pay attention, at least you know what you're going to pay. Is <laughs> when you don't pay attention, you don't know how much you're going to end up paying at the end of not listening. I've, we've all been there, haven't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Jesus lived a perfect life dependent upon his father, totally. And he was not self-reliant, but father-reliant. Everything. Jesus serves, he serves, it, 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 Jesus serves as a perfect example about what kind of life we should be living. And as I said, there is a higher self and a lower self or mind that literally keeps us enslaved. Now, the higher self is, has been growing from the ages. You can't go by and tell how old you are spiritually. You can't. You can tell, I can tell you how old you are physically because I can see your origin there, but I can't see your origin spiritually. And imagine when you get born again. <laughs> How many of you know when you got born again, you stopped dying? Because you died. <laughs> when you die, the higher self is supposed to take over. The, 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 which is the spirit, the spirit of God. And the, your, don't forget, you are a spirit being. Your body is meant to serve your spirit, not your spirit is meant to serve your body. That's why Jesus did everything in the natural. He didn't walk on the water as a spirit being. He walked on the water as a natural being. He did not speak to the storm and tell it to, to, be, tell it to be still as a, a spiritual being. He did it as a natural person, but he was literally controlled by his spirit. That's why I want, and I gotta, I've been saying this over and over. One of the gifts of the spirit is self-control. My God. Control thyself. Well, which self do you control? The one that's out of control. The only self that's out of control is your flesh. <laughs> but you're saying, I don't know how to control it. I'm trying to tell you how. The Bible says to mortify the deeds of the flesh through the 
You got to see how incredible you are and how powerful. Listen, Psalms 8, 4, and th 4 through 6, and I'm getting ready to close. I'm going to give you one other passage of Scripture after this. Psalms 8, 4 through 6 says, What is man, that's you, even one man, that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him, for you made him a little lower than the angels. That's physically now, not spiritually. Physically, we're made lower than the angels because we have a physical body. It says, listen, it says, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. So you are crowned with glory and honor. God has so richly conferred unto you his authority and his power and his kingship. How many of you believe you are kings? You have a throne right now in heaven and you're seated there. It's just that many of us are sitting here saying, I can't see it. That's why you're not there. Doesn't mean you can't get there. It says you made him, you, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. And you put all things under his feet. 